If the Relationship Alive podcast has been helpful for you or someone you know, and you want to ensure that the podcast continues, you can help that happen for as little as the price of a monthly cup of coffee or a decent sandwich, or if it works for you, a lovely dinner. You can also make a one-time donation if that's better for you. For more information and to choose the tier that feels right, please visit neilsatin.com slash support, or you can text the word support to the number 33444 and follow the instructions. Thank you so much for your help in making this podcast happen and being part of making the world's relationships more conscious and thriving as a whole. And now, on with the show. Hello and welcome to another episode of Relationship Alive. This is your host, Neil Satin. So I have a question for you. How do you actually get better at being in relationship? How do you have different kinds of experiences than what you've always experienced? And I'm talking about especially once you get past the honeymoon stage, because let's face it, that's pretty much easy for all of us. You find someone, you're attracted to them, hopefully they're attracted to you, things proceed from there, and it's all good until suddenly it isn't. Suddenly, all of that energy that was going into your relationship while the rest of your life often gets put on hold suddenly isn't sustainable anymore. More and more, your focus shifts back to the other things that you have going on in your life. Um, maybe you and your partner move in together, maybe you actually get married, who knows, but one thing is for sure that the kind of attention that we typically start out with in relationship with another person doesn't last forever. And honestly, if we put things on hold in order to woo our beloved, then it couldn't last forever because you gotta pay the bills and make sure the kids get fed and um, you know, or the dog gets taken out, all of that stuff, right? It all has to happen. The problem is that once all of that normal life stuff starts happening and our relationship starts receiving less and less time and attention, well, then things start to come apart. It could be that your partner starts to notice your faults and some of the things that they were willing to overlook in the beginning when they were getting all of your attention. Or it could be that you're starting to notice their quirks and idiosyncrasies, the kinds of things that actually become little thorns in your side, even though it didn't seem like such a big deal at first. Or maybe you just start to grow disconnected from each other because life well, let's just say because life, <laughs> you become uh, in, engrossed in everything that has to happen in the day to day. And particularly in this day and age with our exposure to media through the internet and Facebook and blogs and texting and you know it just as well as I do. There are all kinds of ways to distract ourselves and to not only distract ourselves, but just to be caught up in the pace of life and living. It could just be our job and we work really hard and we come home and we're exhausted. And there, there are any number of reasons why our attention on our relationship suffers. And so then it could seem like, well, the answer is to just try to do romantic things or um, somehow spice things up with your partner or to even take a serious look at the things that are going wrong as windows into our potential to heal and grow. And actually, the things that I just mentioned are really important. It's great to do romantic things and have surprises. And it's great to look at the little things that are starting to go wrong as opportunities to heal and grow. After all, that's what last week's episode with Haiti Schleifer was all about. It's unraveling and teasing apart the knot 
that keeps us bound in a pattern of dysfunction with our partner. So by all means, do that. Heal. Grow. However, there's a quality of time that's also important. And this became really clear to me recently when I was reading a book that's actually about productivity. As you can tell, I read a lot for the podcast, and most of what I read is from people who are going to be guests on the show. However, sometimes I'm just trying to figure out how to either become more productive or I'm just reading a novel to give myself a break and get immersed in the world of heart and imagination. Whatever it is, I'm always drawing upon all of these influences and letting them percolate into everything that I bring here to the show with you. And this book that was about how to be more productive in some respects, that's not really fully what it was about, and, and I'll give you the details here in a moment. Also, it also revealed to me this quality of relating that is so important to taking your relationship past the honeymoon stage, past the, the doldrums or the obstacle or the things that are really challenging you into a realm of deeper and deeper intimacy, deeper and deeper thriving, deeper and deeper joy. Occasionally, it might be deeper and deeper despair. Hopefully, that's not too frequently. And it's this quality that I'm going to call deep relating, and I'm coining this term right now because it relates to this book. And the, the book is called Deep Work, and it's by Cal Newport. Now, Cal Newport is a professor, and his book, Deep Work, is all about the importance of how we cultivate our ability to carve out time in our lives to focus to be fully concentrated and attentive to whatever it is that we're working on. And his thesis in the book is that this ability to engage in deep work, deep, focused, uninterrupted work, is one of the chief currencies of success in the world today. That if you want to get ahead, if you want to make an impact, if you really want to thrive as a professional, then the more that you can devote time and energy to deep work, better your chances are at success. And there aren't a lot of people who can do deep work because for most of us, it's not something that comes naturally. Or Actually, I'm thinking back to A.S. Neal and Summerhill, and he had this whole philosophy that as children, we're actually quite able to focus deep onto something that interests us. And so, if we remove our distractions and cultivate that ability to be focused, then it actually is natural. And in fact, that's what the flow state is all about. It's allowing yourself to use that natural capacity to be engrossed in something. However, most of us learn either directly or indirectly that the things that matter most to us aren't the most important to the world, at least for a particular period of time, often when we're in school and need to do the work that someone else thinks is important to us, or maybe it's in our home when we need to do the chores that someone else thinks is, is, should be really important to us. Whatever it is, we often learn to put our own need for time and attention on the back burner. And so, rather than cultivating our ability to focus and to push away all distractions, we instead get indoctrinated into a world of distraction where you put yourself second and you put other people's needs first. So, I don't blame you for this, nor do I blame myself. It's just something that if you observe your life and if you're like, me, or like most of us, the chances are that you are always being bombarded, just like I was talking about earlier. And in fact, they've quantified for people who 
um, are working that your average workday out of, say, an eight hour day, a very small percentage of that ends up actually being focused on work be- or, or on productive work. Now, some people might consider emailing all day to be really productive work. And for some people, it actually is. That's like the sole purpose of what they do. But for others of us, what is really important is allowing ourselves the time to tackle some of the deepest challenges, some of the most profound lines of creative inquiry, to create time to do that and to move the ball forward in our personal life, in our creative endeavors, in our work life. Like how many times did you wish over the past month, let's say, that if only you didn't have to do X, Y, Z, like all these things that were just pressing upon you, if only you didn't have to do all those things, how you could make some huge amount of progress in some area that would be really important to you or to your company or to your relationship. Well, now you see where I'm going. If you're like most of us, you might have that feeling quite a bit that you're just kind of keeping the wheel going. You're on the hamster wheel and and you know, you got to just do all those things. You know, your inbox fills up. Your task list, your to-do list is huge and you're just trying to keep up. And I want you to have the experience of that not being your life all the time. And that's one of the advantages of deep work that Cal Newport talks about is that you get to experience a certain kind of spaciousness that comes from giving yourself that time to do those creative endeavors, to allowing the urgency of all of these things that are pressing in upon you, to allow that urgency to fall away so that you can be fully attentive to the task at hand. And what you'll probably find initially is that it's really hard to stay focused on anything for any length of time, even probably longer than five minutes and and you're going to be hooked into something else. So this is why we develop strategies like um, turning off your connection to the internet and in basically getting rid of any possible way to distract yourself so that you can have that focused time. So you're eliminating all these distractions and then on top of that, There are all these ways that you can develop your capacity for attention and focus. So why is that important to us here on the Relationship Alive podcast? Why is that important to your relationship? Well, if you haven't figured it out yet, it's because there's, with all of these new ways of handling and enjoying relationship that we've been talking about and all of the new kinds of skills that are required of you and me to do it well, there's a certain kind of time and attention that it will require you to develop these skills. And then once they're developed, you need time and attention in order to put them to use. So, think about your relationship as just another aspect of your life, right? And there are going to be things that are just on your relationship to-do list, you know, not forgetting a birthday or making sure that you do get date night on the calendar every so often, those kinds of things. Or there could be your daily rituals, like we've talked about so many times, for instance, your your evening gratitude ritual with your partner. There are so many rituals that are really helpful, of course, to uh, maintaining the vibrancy of your relationship. But then there's this time for deep relating. Deep relating, I quantify as time that is distraction-free, where you are not just dipping into entertainment, so you're not just spending two hours with your partner watching a movie or episodes of Grey's Anatomy on Netflix or whatever it is, um, or Mozart in the Jungle. I kind of like that one right now. Um, So you're not doing that 
Instead, you are sh- are there to just be there and to see what comes up with the two of you together. Now, you might actually decide that you're going to play like a game or something like that, like Scrabble or, um, well, I'd say Pictionary, but I don't think you can play Pictionary with just a team of two. But there are games that you can play that help you tap into each other's creativity, each other's intellect, um, each other's resourcefulness. And that is something that I personally consider to be really valuable. But you might also give yourselves the time to just simply be with each other, to be in each other's presence, to unwind, to get through the catching up about your day. And of course, that can be really important. And, but to get past that to, okay, now we've caught each other up. Now what? Now what do we do? How can we enjoy each other? How can we touch each other in a way that isn't necessarily about sex, but it's just about communicating our presence with each other, that we are here together? Can we just gaze into each other's eyes? Can we talk about our dreams, our dreams for our own life, our dreams for our relationship together? Can we talk about amazing things that we might do one day? Can we talk about the things that inspire us? Can we simply hold each other and see what it feels like to hold and to be held by another? Can you give each other the space of silence? as well as the energy of interaction. And there's actually an energy that comes up in that space, in that silence as well. And can you sense it? Can you be there in your partner's presence in silence and sense the energy that arises and feel, where does it arise? Does it arise in my heart? Does it arise in my gut? Does it arise in my head and my curiosity? Does it arise in my loins? You know, where, where are you feeling your partner and where are you feeling yourself in relationship to your partner? And what do you notice about how that can shift? How it can shift over time? You will never find out if you don't give yourself that time. And it's not typically the kind of thing that can happen in five or 10 minutes a day or even a half an hour a day. Now, granted, I'm a big fan of half an hour a day. In fact, Chloe and I, when we're really busy, we make it a priority to have at least half an hour each day where the whole world stops, our phones get turned off, and we are there with each other. And that's so important to have that touch tone, touch stone feeding us. And yet, There are these bigger chunks, the deep relating. For Chloe and me, it's on Sundays. On Sundays, those are our days to be together. And granted, we still have time over the course of that day where we may do our own thing or we may spend a little time with a friend. But we have big chunks of time where we are just there with each other. And sometimes it's doing something and oftentimes it's just being together. And the beauty is that with these long periods of time, and I'm saying at least 90 minutes to two hours of being together, things can emerge. It's not like you have to force yourself to not do anything. I mean, although sometimes that's great too. But it's being there together and being willing to sense what emerges and to notice the quality. Like, is this thing that's emerging, is that just about distracting yourself from the space or from what's come up for you? And if that's the case, maybe you can see what's underneath that. Maybe you can see like, oh, like right here, I'm really nervous. Right here in this moment, I'm scared about being seen, or I'm scared that you actually won't accept me how I am, or I'm terrified that this thing that is so interesting to me is actually um, boring for you, 
And there are all of these ways that rather than be there fully present in the moment, we just decide like, hey, let's, let's do this thing. And this thing is something that actually is distracting us from what is there together. And once you're there together fully in that kind of presence, that's what opens you up to the healing that we've been talking about, the dynamic passion that we've been talking about, the curiosity that we've been talking about, and the ability to transcend patterns, relational patterns that have held you back. That comes from having the pattern right there staring you in the face and having awareness and then being willing to do something about it. And the only way that's going to happen is if you give it time and energy and the willingness to be there with your partner and say, oh my God, did you notice how I just wanted to get all distracted right then? Or do you notice how uncomfortable I seem right now? Or I'm noticing that I'm worried you don't want to be here. Well, what comes out of those moments? It's a little unpredictable. And that unpredictability is part of what adds so much spice and fire to our lives together. It's that kind of unpredictability that often stokes the flames of our attraction in the very beginning. And it's what can create a really healthy degree of variety in our lives together as we stay together over the long term. It's the most interesting thing that being together for these long periods of deep relating actually create the opportunity for sparks of creativity and new life in your relationship that are so hard to experience when you're just going through the motions or when you're just allocating five minutes here, 10 minutes there, or that one week a year when you go on vacation together and the rest of the time it's just the daily grind. If that's the way it works for you, then that one week a year, you're probably going to spend half that time just catching up with each other and dealing with your resentments. And then maybe you'll enjoy yourselves for a few days and then it's time to go. Now, I want it to be better than that for you. And maybe it's not quite that bad. I'm sure I'm, I'm kind of generalizing here. But if you are spending that deep time over and over and over again, and it's not just about your problems, it's also about your joys, and it's not just about your problems and your joys, but it's also about creating space for whatever emerges, and you can just laugh if you're like sitting there with no idea of what to do, well then that, you can just laugh at that, like, oh my God, here we are. I just want to do something. I just want to do something to get out of how uncomfortable this is. I mean, that's funny. And it may also open the doorway to a way of being together that is totally new. It could be that one of you gets inspired and grabs the almond oil and offers the other a massage. Or it could be... Uh, there are so many possibilities. So rather than filling your head with all these possibilities, what I would love for you to do is to experience what deep relating can offer your relationship. It will offer you increased love, increased capacity to even be focused and to be with your partner in that way. And it's a muscle that you're going to have to develop. Trust me, it's worth it. So if you're interested more in the work that led me to talk about deep relating, then I definitely recommend you check out Cal Newport's book, Deep Work. It was very influential for me and it's really helped me structure how I work over the course of a week to actually get a lot done, including all the reading that I have to do. And on top of that, I encourage you to carve out time for deep relating. Could you get one two-hour block out of your week? Could you get two? 
what's possible for you. See what's possible and give it that kind of intentionality. Like, I'm carving out this time for us to be together, to turn off our phones, to turn off the TV, to turn off our computers, to turn off our podcasts. You can listen to the Relationship Alive podcast together, of course. That counts. But to turn all of that off and to tune in to each other and see what emerges. I hope you let me know. As always, you can reach me, Neilius, N-E-I-L-I-U-S, at neilsatin.com, or you can join the Relationship Alive community on Facebook. Uh, as always, I love to hear from you. I cannot promise I will write back to you, but I do read every email that comes my way. And uh, again, just like I mentioned at the beginning of the show, if you'd like to support the podcast, if this is helpful for you, then please visit neilsatin.com slash support or text the word, to su- the word support to the number 33444 and follow the instructions. I look forward to hearing from you and to seeing you next week. I will be here with Erica Fox, author of Winning From Within, and we are going to talk about all of the amazing ways that you can cultivate your own personal growth and bring that to your relationship. Her book was on the New York Times bestseller list, and it is the follow-up to Sheila Heen and Doug Stone's Difficult Conversations. Um, we talked to them back in the fall. And uh, so this is when, when all you've learned about how to have difficult conversations doesn't work and you're trying to figure out, okay, maybe the problem is with me, what do you do? That's what next week's episode with Erica Fox is all about. And uh, until then, take care. Have a great week.